Hey you guys, so this problem is problem number 53 from the section on node versus mesh. So we've got a circuit here that has 10, a 10 milliamp independent uh, current source and it's connected in parallel with these resistors. So um, this is a 2.5K, 1K, 2K, 1K, and 5K. So this section is really about comparing which method is better. So in, sec in, in part A, they say which method of circuit analysis would you recommend and explain why? So let's consider both situations. So let's say if we were to use a node voltage method, we have um, one, two, three, four nodes. And one of these nodes is going to be the ground. And in this case, it doesn't matter because the, the node that you should pick for the ground should be the one with the most circuit elements. And they all have three circuit elements. Two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can pick any of them as the ground. There's no advantage to any of them. So, um, and they're, so one is the ground. So you know that voltage is zero. So the rest of them, this node, this node, and this node, we have to find the, um, we have to write nodal equations and find um, a, uh, the voltages across them. So we have three unknowns with the node voltage method. If we use the mesh method, we have one mesh, two mesh, and three mesh. And one of these mesh, we already know the current. The schematic gives it to us, 10 milliamps, right? And we're looking for the power dissipated across this circuit element, the 1K resistor. So we need to find that current and that current. So it ends up being two equations, two unknowns that we have. And since uh, the mesh method, we have two unknowns versus the node method, which we have to find three unknowns, we're going to use the mesh. So that's the answer to part A. Mesh is more favorable because we have fewer unknowns. For part B, so we're, it says use your recommended method of analysis to find the total power dissipated in the 1K resistor. So let's go ahead and and do that. So we have um, this one we know is 10 milliamps. They gave that to us. This one is some unknown I sub A. This one is some unknown I sub B. So the mesh equations are mesh at I A. So we've got the voltage drop across the 2.5 K resistor. So that's 2.5 K times I A minus 10 milliamps. And then the next voltage drop is across the 2K resistor, so that's 2K I A. And the final voltage drop is across the 1K resistor, and that's going to be 1K times I A minus I B. That's equal to zero. So mesh at I B. We got the first voltage drop is across a 5K resistor. That's going to be 5K times I B minus 10 milliamps. The next voltage drop is across the 1K resistor. So that's going to be 1K times I B minus I A. And the final voltage drop is across the other 1K resistor. So that's going to be 1K times I B. That's equal to zero. Now we're going to write, put those two equations into a matrix, our simultaneous equation solver. Our unknowns are IA, IB, and some constant. So let's go across um, term by term. So this first term is 2.5K for the IA. So we got 2.5K. The next term is a constant. We got negative 10 milliamp times 2.5k and it's going to go on the side of constants as a positive number. So we got 10 milliamps times um, 2.5k on that side for constants. The next term is 2.5k IA, so we got a plus 2.5k. Next term after that is 1k IA, so we got plus 1k. And then the final term is negative 1K IV. That's the first line in our matrix. Okay, the next line, second equation of our matrix is 
and measure IB. So the first term is going to be 5K IB. So we got 5K there. And then the next term after that is a constant. We got 5K times negative 10 milliamp. It's going to go to the sign of constants as a positive number. So that's going to be 10 milliamp times 5K. The next term after that is 1K IB. So we got plus 1K there. The next term after that is negative 1K IA. So we got negative 1K there. And then the final term is 1K IB. So plus 1K. So now we're going to enter that into our simultaneous equation solver. It's going to be two equations and two unknowns. So we got 2.5E3 plus 2. Oops, that's not 2.5, that's 2. 2.0. This term should be plus 2, 2K, plus 2E3, plus 1E3. The next one is negative 1E3, and 10E minus 3 times 2.5E3. Then we got negative 1E3. 5e3 plus 1e3 plus 1e3. Then 10e minus 3 times 5e3. Solve. Okay. So, what you should have, the answer you should have gotten for ia and ib is ia is 6 milliamps. IB is 8 milliamps. Okay, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a power across the 1K resistor. And of course, P is equal to I squared R. So P, P of 1K is going to be um, the IR, I squared R, right? What's the I? The I is the net current of IA which is 6 milliamp, minus IB, which is 8 milliamps, squared, and then the R is the 1K. So let's do the math. That's going to be 2 milliamps, so 2E minus 3 squared times 1E3. And you should come up for your answer in part B. That P of the 1K power dissipated by the 1K resistor is 4 milliwatts. That's the answer for part B. All right, so in part C, they asked a question. Would you change your recommendation if the problem had been to find the power developed by the 10 milliamp um, current source? Explain. This is one of the problems with an answer in the back of the book. And the answer says, no, since the mesh current method still minimizes the number of equations to write and solve. I kind of disagree with that. So I, I say that if you, in my opinion, and I don't think that this is either a right or wrong answer, so if you have this for, for one of your homework questions or one of your test questions and you got wrong for disagreeing, then I would think that would be pretty lame. Um, in my opinion, if you have to find, okay, so if you want to find the power dissipated across that, you have another unknown, a third unknown, the Vx, in which case you need, you do need a third equation. You have to find the Vx. So in my opinion, they become equivalent. They become, because with the known me method, you have three equations, three unknowns, and now if you're looking for that, you have to find some unknown V sub x. So even though the correct, technically, the correct answer is that you wouldn't change it, in my opinion, if I knew ahead of time that I needed to find a third unknown, then it's a toss-up. Just take a coin, flip, and they're both equivalent because you still have to find three unknowns in both cases. That's my opinion. Um, so then, after getting that wrong, according to the book, it says, find the power delivered by the 10 milliamp current source. So power is voltage. So power, power of 10 milliamps is equal to, well, VI, right? So that's going to be 10 milliamp times 
some VX, whatever is the voltage drop here. So the point of the arrow tells me the direction of the voltage rise is that way. That means it went from minus to plus. So the schematic gives me that information. So I need to find VX. Um, so we're going to take this mesh equation in that direction. The positive current is entering the negative terminal. So we know this is going to be minus Vx plus the next voltage drop is going to be 2.5K. And now we, are, we, know, um, we know that it's going to be, since I erase Ia is 6 milliamps, and I, so it's going to be 10 milliamps minus 6 milliamps plus the next voltage drop is going to be 5K times 10 milliamps minus IB, which is 8 milliamps. Okay, and now that has equal to zero. We're going to take that negative VX and put it on the other side of the equation. So VX is equal to that. So now you put that into your equation and you got 2.5 E3 times 10 minus 6 is 4. So 4 E minus 3 plus 5 E3, 10 minus 8 is, 8 is 2 times 2 E minus 3. So Vx is equal to 20. Vx is equal to 20 volts. Power then is going to be 10 times Vx. Now the sign of Vx is negative because the terminal that the current is entering is a negative terminal. So it's going to be times negative 20. So when you do that, you should come up with an answer of negative 2, negative, negative 0 0.2 watt. And that's the answer for part D. And let me just make sure they have 200 milliwatts in the back of the book. And that's because the format of the question is find the power delivered by the 10 milliamp current source. So by the, using the word delivered, it implies, it already implies a negative. But if we don't say anything, the format of the answer is negative 0.2 watts. The negative tells me that the power is delivered. And if you get points up for answering negative 0.2 watts versus positive 0.2 comma delivering, then you have a really, really lame teacher because that says the exact same thing. And that's the answer. All right, you guys, be sure to give the Facebook page a like so that people can find us because the more people that find us, the more pe it'll benefit you. you. You know, it'll become a more interactive forum, which is what I'm looking for. And by the way, please help other people. If you see a question that you know the answer to, please help. That's all I'm asking from you guys. All right, have a great day.